Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our CarTech How-To video on the newly redesigned 2023 Chevrolet Colorado, and this is the ZR2 trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Mankato Motors Chevrolet in Mankato, Minnesota. On the, uh, on the upper trims, including the ZR2, the driver's screen is an 11-inch all-digital screen. On the lower trim levels, it is an 8-inch um, all-digital screen. And there is a qu quite a difference between what you get uh, in, the, in the different screens. Definitely more things in the 11-inch screen. Okay, but there isn't a lot of configuration. It, it's sort of uh, pre-configured things so I'll demonstrate on the steering wheel on the right hand side you have got a button that looks like two square boxes kind of overlapping one has an arrow into the other this is the only button on the steering wheel you can use to change the driver screen and what you can do is basically change the whole look so we've got this one with the big rpm gauge transmission temp uh, oil temp uh, you got a g meter on the far right, um, you've got, of course, miles per hour and a gear selector. Down below, you get miles still empty, um, that you're in two-wheel drive. you got the gas gauge, park, uh, gear selector indicators again, and then engine temp, and then uh, the odometer on uh, the far right. Now, if I click this, you get this change. Now, you can't customize anything that's right on the page itself, but you do get this nice different view. So now you've got steering angle, and your transfer case has uh, also been added to the right side of the screen. you got pitch and roll on the left, and you still got uh, all your gauges, and now you also have a compass. I'm going to click it one more time. This is the calm screen. All right, so in this screen, uh, you can get rid of just a lot of things if you don't want all that information uh, on the screen press it again and then we get this screen where we've got a trip one and two on the left we've got media on the right and then you've got an rpm gauge with uh your digital speed in the the center of that if i press again then we get this uh gauge with our picture which is really neat uh so you got a traditional speedometer lo or traditional looking speedometer with the digital speedometer inside you still have your four gauges as far as uh, transmission temp and uh, oil temperature and that kind of stuff. And then over on the far right, of course, you've got your RPM gauge uh, and your gear selector. Always, you can see your transfer case uh, in the lower left. Now, um, here you've got uh, the trip meter in the middle. Okay, if I press it again, uh, this is your, your maps. Now, I'm going to get out of there just because it's so blaringly white. Um, without activating it, uh, I can't get Google Maps to show up, but it is Google built in, and that is how large your map display will be on your screen, which is awesome. Um, okay, uh, so those are the ways that you can configure this particular screen from the steering wheel. Okay, now there are a couple of other buttons on the steering wheel on the far right that you can use. For instance, if I go up or down with this toggle switch, you're going to see that I can switch between my radio favorites. Whatever I've set as a favorite, I can switch between and then press this to go there. And then it just disappears. Okay, the only time you see that screen is if you go through the menu button here, and then you can see it right there. Okay, now, I'm going to go back to where I was. Okay, uh, if I press the music button, okay, then I get my sources. Okay. And I can just click on whatever I want. And that's what it's going to go to. And again, I can verify that by clicking over here. And there it is on FM. All right. So, I mean, it's just very interesting. That's very minimal as to what you can do. Just those couple of buttons. I will point out that this is, of course, your phone button. 
Uh, you can turn the phone on by clicking up. You can hang up a phone call by pushing down. This would be your voice command for your Google Assistant, which currently is not activated because I haven't activated a plan yet. But that'll do things like uh, you can tell it to select a radio station, uh, pick a navigation point and go to it, uh, set your temperature in the car and that kind of stuff. You do have a heated steering wheel button, which is very, 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 very awesome. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, you have got, of course, cruise control on, cruise control off, uh, down is set, up, up is resume, and then this is your gap setter for your adaptive cruise control, because this does have, of course, adaptive cruise control. There is one other way that you can configure information in the driver screen, but that takes place in the infotainment screen. So I'll switch over to that and we'll show you what you can do to the driver screen from the infotainment screen. All right, so what you want to do is on the infotainment screen, you go to home, okay, and then you're going to go over and go to vehicle status, and then you've got overview, tires and brakes, fluids and filters, engine, trip, and G-force. So on overview, this is a part where you can spin the vehicle, and anywhere there's a plus sign, you can click on it, and it'll tell you what your brake pad life is, but if you click on this, and this is the same for all of these, you will get an option to add to driver display. And now you saw that my trip information just switched to brake pad life. Now the thing is, where you saw that trip info, that is the only place that you will see these show up. So if you are in a different screen, say perhaps Google Maps or this one or this one, they don't show up. You have to be in the screen where trip information shows up because that, that is the square on the dash that changes. Okay, now I, I'm going to hit remove from display. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna click the minus and I'm gonna click the other plus button. This is PSI, so tire pressure. I'll say add to display and there you see it. I'm gonna remove from display, click the X. Now if I spin it around, I have a few more options. I'm not gonna show them all to you, but they work the same way. I'm just gonna do this one, oil life. If I click here, add to display, you can get oil life. Okay. I'm just going to leave that there actually because I'm going to go over to tires and brakes. Okay, we did. I showed you tire pressure and I showed you brake pad life. These are the, these work the same way. Okay, so I can add it. I can relearn the tire pressure there. Okay, so I'm going to go to fluids and filters, oil life. We didn't see engine air filter life, so I'm going to click on that one, and I'm going to go. I can reset it or add to driver display. Now you can see that over there go back here I'm gonna to go to engine okay these are some gauges we didn't see again you just click on it say add to driver display and that's where it shows up see so it just overwrites whatever you last had uh, so you don't need to remove it from the dashboard first you just click on what you want um, all right let's go to trip now this is the only place that you can reset the trip meters so if you just click on this I can add it to the display if I want, but if you watch on trip two, I'm gonna hit reset, hit reset again, and you just see that go right to zero. So this is where you reset your trip. Okay, fuel economy, if you wanna see that. Okay, and I can add that to the driver display. I can change the distance if I want. So it measures every 25 miles, every 50 miles, or every 455, or 450 miles. Um, Okay, I'm gonna click on the X. And finally, we're gonna go to G-Force. And on G-Force, that one is going to show up. It's gonna look just like that gauge on the right. That one is already on there. So that's it for the driver's information screen, uh, how you can manipulate information from the steering wheel and from the infotainment screen. Next, we're gonna take a look at the infotainment screen. 
All right, so this is an 11.3 inch uh, infotainment screen. And you know, you have your volume and you got your power. Those are the only physical buttons uh, for the infotainment screen. So basically the way it works is you've got uh, five icons, actually six, including your uh, voice command up here, that stay on the left as shortcuts. Uh, you do have, uh, this is sort of the traditional view that we're, that we're used to seeing with apps, okay? Um, and then these ones, uh, this one here is controls and safety. And then this one here is your phone and it's got that mark because there's uh, a phone in there that was, that was, has too thick of a case to charge. Uh, and then you got Google Maps, which I can't get that to run because you have to actually have a plan, but it's Google Maps and you know, it, it, well, you can zoom in, zoom out, search, have traffic, all sorts of uh, nice things. This is your media, and then of course your home. And as I mentioned earlier, this one here is to your Google. That, you need a data plan from your vehicle manufacturer. All right. So there are a couple of things in here that don't work unless you have the plan. Of course, when you buy the vehicle new, you get a complimentary uh, trial plan. Uh, whether you want to continue that after uh, the plan expires, of course, is up to you. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. All right, but let's get into uh, how this works. So interesting enough, there is no traditional light switch on the left of the steering wheel where you would normally have your lights. Instead, you have this button that's always there, and then you can turn lights off, you can have them on auto, uh, you can, uh, automatic control is turned off, so now everything is just on. Uh, that would be your uh, low beam lights there. All right, so the control is is right there, uh, which is which is interesting, but it is always there. It never disappears. This one is just notifications. We'll uh, just tap out of that. I'm a little low on fuel, but I'll be fine. I'm not moving anywhere. Uh, and then of course you got your your um, out ambient outdoor temperature, and then your clock, and as usual on any infotainment screen if I simply oh you can't oh there it goes I wasn't click on the right spot you just click on the clock and then you can set it okay now um, so let's go down to vehicle all right so we have power window lockout which occurs here instead of on your control so that's another thing that's sort of been taken out of the physical controls so you can do a power window lockout if you want Auto high beams can be turned off or on. You got your front fog lights are here. Uh, park assist, so your rear parking sensors can be turned on or off here. And then you have hill descent control that can be activated right there. Now, under see more controls, you, uh, under doors and windows, um, you can turn the whole power window lockout off if you want. Uh, and that just is another way to do it. Okay, under lights, you're gonna see the same controls we had up here earlier, but I think it's a little better laid out. Uh, these are sort of a shortcut bar. Um, but basically here, you know you're dealing with your headlights, so you can have them off on auto. You can just have the, the, the um, automatic light control off, or you can turn your low beams on. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel, put it back on auto. Fog lamps early, uh, easy on or off there. Cargo lights. Okay, you can choose okay, to control uh, or turn on the main cargo light if you want. And then down here, auto high beams on or off. Okay, under, uh, under these little arrows, you, you really don't get anything extra. It's just a different way of clicking on or off. Okay, it's the same basic controls. Um, here you do get a turn headlight reminder on. That's the only additional thing. Okay. Now, uh, under drive and park, you can have traction control on or off and hill descent control off or on. Okay, and then again, if you go under traction control on, and um, electro electronic stability control, you can hit, choose to have traction control off, which would mean electronic stability control is still on. You can turn them both off or both on. Okay, and then under hill descent control, nothing new on or off right there okay let's go back that was all under drive and park okay so let's go backwards here and if you want hill descent control you just simply turn it on right there you just have to be going slow enough all right let's x out of that 
Let's go backwards to, to, to home here. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna skip phone for a minute because I will hook up a phone later. Uh, I'm gonna come down here and go to Google Maps. I can't show you anything because I have to purchase a plan. I have to sign up for a plan, uh, but it is Google Maps. Okay. Works, works, it does work nice. So you can pinch, zoom, you get traffic, you get, you know, what you expect from Google. Uh, a good navigation uh, service. All right, moving down to media. Uh, if you want to do sources, you can click up here. Click on any one of your sources here. I'm just gonna leave it on FM for now. And then ways you can tune. Well, you can uh, skip to the next available station. You can go here, you can manually type in a number, or you can look down through here. And if you notice a little star, that means anything you want to make a favorite, you can then add as a favorite. There's 291.7s, I'm not sure why. Maybe we'll do this one, there you go. All right, and uh, if I go, if I wanna go to a preset, I can just click here. All right, so that took us to SiriusXM because the favorites will be AM, they'll be FM, and they'll be Sirius XM all mixed in together. I'm gonna go here, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set it again. So I'm gonna click hold to set. And there it is. Okay, I've got more over here. Okay. Right. Now, if I click on the gear wheel in the top right. This is where you're gonna manage your favorites. So if you got, if you wanna get rid of some, you wanna have more, less, whatever, rearrange the order, here's what you can do. So if I grab this little icon, this allows me to move the favorite to a different position. You hit trash and it's gonna take that one out. But then it leaves it blank so that on the screen it's gonna show up as, you know, click, click, click to save is what it's gonna do. Um, but that's where you manage those favorites. Okay, you can turn radio text messaging uh, on where they tell you the name of the artist and the station that scrolls across the screen. That can be on or off. Um, and then radio text categories. There, you listen to country or pop, whatever, you can turn that on. To control the sound in here, uh, and this does have a Bose sound system, very nice. Uh, you can do the equalizer, and this is a click drag, or you can use the arrows. You can do mid-range, you can do treble, and you can do fade and balance. This again is a click drag. And then of course you can use the arrows if you prefer. All right, let's go back. This, this by the way, I should point this out. This right here automatically recenters everything. Okay, so that's what that button is going to do. Now I wanna show you AM because and it's gonna look just like FM. It's gonna run the same way. I'm gonna show you Sirius XM and it runs almost identical. You've got the same kind of controls. You just have a few more because some things can be live. Uh, you know, you can have a profile um, for your Sirius XM channel. Um, but if I click here, this is where you can select music, sports, news, if you wanna browse something, and then what category you wanna do, and then you can scroll through. Uh, we'll click a little um, Bob Marley. All right, so um, that's all right there. This gear wheel is gonna do the exact same thing. So AM, FM, Sirius XM are all laid out the same way. So that's AM, FM, Sirius XM, that's how you're gonna tune, it's how you're gonna save a favorite, it's how you're gonna manage your favorites, and how you're gonna adjust sound. Okay, can't go into Google Maps again, I mentioned that, so let's go to the home, where we have a few more apps that we can take a look at. All right, we've already done audio, we've already done math, we're gonna come back to phone, let's take a look at trailering. This does have a trailer hitch built right into it. Um, here, you can choose to add a new trailer, use a guest trailer, or use accessory, there's no trailer at all. And you can then start that profile and you, you'll have to add a few things. You're gonna name it, you're gonna tell it the size and that kind of stuff. But then it's really nice later that when you want it, it, it sets it all up for you just by clicking on the name that you set. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to home for a minute. Google Assistant is not gonna work currently. Uh, Play Store, if I was signed up to a plan, I could go right to the Play Store and download apps 
directly to the infotainment screen that will show up as icons um, that are compatible with the vehicle. And as always, that's a growing market. There's more and more every year that you can get off that Play Store that'll work. We'll get back to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in a little bit. Um, despite the fact that you pretty much have all physical controls for the climate, they did throw in a climate button where you can have a nice graphic look and you can change things from here. But really, everything is down here. Pretty much everything you want between this row up here and this row down here is going to give you every single physical button uh, that you need. And I absolutely love that. And it even includes the sync button. This does have heated and ventilated front seats. Uh, both driver and passenger, which is really awesome. Okay, let's get back to home. And I'm going to come back to settings a little bit. This is where you would set up your Wi-Fi hotspot. It uh, it shows you the name. It shows you the password. You, of course, can change those there. And then you can choose to share that uh, hotspot data or not. Okay, go back to home. Um, let's see. Vehicle status, this is what we went to already. So I'm not gonna show you that again, but that's what changes. You can just look at it here, or you can tell it to be put in the driver's information screen, right? Um, camera, this has got a very nice uh, rear backup camera. And if I, uh, right now the camera's activated, but if I go like this, I can have these guidelines here that are swivel, okay? And if you haven't used these much before, the red line right here that juts out, don't back up closer than that. That's literally like an inch off your bumper. So if you have a hitch on, <laughs> don't get close to that. Uh, and then these are increments of feet, and I'm not sure exactly. Typically, they're like uh, one is three feet, one is maybe five feet. Uh, but look in your owner's manual, because I don't have the exact numbers, but it'll tell you. Now, under this view, you can get a trailer hitch view. So when you have a hitch on, this will help you line up as you back up to the trailer. And then if you really want to look down, you can get just a straight down view that when the hitch is attached, you'll be able to see that ball really clearly. All right, so very, very nice backup camera. All right, I'm gonna X out of that. I do love it that they give you an app for that right away. Okay, off-road. Now this uh, only comes on uh, certain trim levels and the ZR2 is one of them. So the way it's set up is you've got Baja Terrain and Overlanding. And you can click on them or you can swipe back and forth. All right, you also have a camera view in each one of these where you can just click and it right away goes to that camera. Now, if you got the 360 camera system on the vehicle, it's then gonna go to that 360 camera. This one just happens to have a, a single uh, rear view camera. All right, but it's really cool. So uh, the red, it keeps, the red is your, your, your max and your minimal. So your highest you've been and the lowest you've been. If you want to reset those, you click on that dot and you can reset. Okay, this is where we are currently, 684 feet. Okay, and this is just another way to display that. And then you've got a compass. If I go to terrain, I get pitch and roll, which is really cool. And then I get uh, my tire pressure. And again, if I want to reset the extreme values, I can hit reset. Extreme values are always in red. And then if I go to Baja, I get uh, a really cool uh, G meter here and I get my steering angle and it tells me where my transfer case is at, okay? And it also tells me my drive mode is normal. This down here gives you uh, your latitude and longitude in case you need to tell somebody where you are. Uh, and again, that camera button just goes straight to the camera. All right, so those are those three off-road pages uh, that that's not available um, on the lower trim levels. So that is cool, and it also shows up, uh, you see some things of, from here in the driver's screen, which is really cool. Okay, air down, this is really neat. So basically, what you do if you wanna air the vehicle down is you take this and you're going to just adjust it to wherever you want. I believe it goes all the way down to 10. And then if I hit start, I would go outside, start to deflate the tire, and as I got to, when I got to 10 PSI, the horn would honk. Then I could move to the next tire, do the same thing. When I got to 10 PSI, the horn would honk. And then when you're done, you can air up again. You hit start, go outside, pump it up. When it hits 36, it honks. 
Uh, so that is a really cool system. Now, if I click more info, it just will give you a, a, another des description when you might want to use that uh, airing up and airing down. That is cool, though. All right, this is just the My Chevrolet app. Okay, you can access that uh, also on your phone, but you can schedule appointments. Uh, typically, you can also do things like uh, roll down your windows, remote start, and those kinds of features. Okay, I'm not gonna go into there, obviously. Okay, now, connected with Google built-in, you've got podcasts that you can go to right here. And you, of course, have got news that you can go into from there. Now, this is not reading news. This would be news that would be auditory, that you could listen to. Okay, now I'm gonna scroll back because there's one that I didn't talk about and that is settings. Now, so under here, um, you can see your connections, phones, Wi-Fi, hotspot, uh, net Wi-Fi networks if you wanna connect to a uh, network at home so you're not pulling off the vehicle's Wi-Fi, okay? Um, the vehicle to phone sharing, if I click on that, then it's, it's turned on, um, but, um, there, you can turn that off. And you can look at uh, which device is trusted. Okay, that's not available in guest mode. You can take a look at display and under the instrument mode, but it is equipped with traffic sign reading. And then you can have turn by turn graphics turned on or off. So when you have the map displayed, you get those nice turn by turn graphics. Okay, if I wanna turn off the display, I get this nice outside uh, outdoor ambient temperature, date and time, and then to turn the screen back on, just gonna tap the power button. All right, uh, let's see. And, and by the way, turning that off doesn't keep, or doesn't make navigation quit, doesn't make your audio quit, it just darkens the screen. Okay, so you have just less glare at you at night. All right, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go back to settings. All right, so we're gonna go down here. We've already seen sounds. Uh, you can have up to, I believe, seven different driver profiles, but basically it's gonna save all of your radio favorites, it's gonna save your driver's uh, screen, what you had up there, if you had some of the gauges up in there, um, and your radio favorites, that kind of stuff, as opposed to somebody else who drives the car. So that when you get in, start it, it recognizes your key and sets up everything just the way you like it. Let's go to the back arrow here. Uh, if you wanna look at privacy, um, this is where you're going to go do that. Uh, the assistant in the voice. Okay, so um, that's not working right now until I set up something, but this is where you can go in and control some things. Okay, so you can take a look at how much storage you have. Then under system, this is where we can do things like change the language. Okay, you can change the units and uh, reset options, uh, and then you can just get a, a basic description. This is running Android 12 right now, uh, system 12. Okay, updates. This does get over the air updates. And so what I'll just mention uh, briefly is right now it's set up to do download updates in the background and download updates via Wi-Fi when available. Typically that's gonna mean you're gonna need to be parked and uh, um, the vehicle, I think, believe can be off. It doesn't have to be running, it just has to be connected to Wi-Fi. So like when you're at home, right? So basically it downloads everything in the background, waits until you're parked and you're safe, and then it does the update, because it changes some things on the screen and you really don't want that happening while you're driving. Okay, we'll go back here. All right, and then here is just information on Google. Okay, you can send some feedback if you want, if, you, if you're signed into that. Okay, I'm going to go back home here. I think I think that's the end of settings. Yes. Okay. So, um, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, in order to use the Google Assistant, the Google Maps, and the App Store, you have to be signed into a paid plan. Uh, and you get that through OnStar. Uh, OnStar is going to have a plan that will include Google built in. Uh, so you get that. So you can look at their plans um, to see what the cost is per month. The um, the vehicle, when brand new, comes with a trial period so you can try things out. So what's not going to work 
if you don't have that plan. Well, you, you've seen it today. The Google Maps doesn't come up. Uh, your voice command button doesn't work. Uh, and you can't go into the Play Store. Now, that being said, you've got Android Auto. You have Apple CarPlay, so you can still have Google Maps. From your Android phone, you can use your Android phone's Google Assistant to do things from your phone. Obviously, it won't do anything for the car, but if you want to, you know, change music sources or whatever, you can use that Android that um, Android Assistant there. Uh, and in Apple uh, CarPlay, you can use Siri. Um, as long as Siri can hear you, you can talk to it like you would at home. And tell it to, you know, open up a different music source and play. Uh, or set a navigation course. All those things are currently available on your phones. So there's a lot of things you can do without paying for a plan. So when you get to that point, you'll just have to make a personal decision as to whether that's something you want to continue or not. The only thing I'll mention is that, you know, with that OnStar package, when you have an accident, uh, it is really nice to have those emergency services called, uh, especially if you can't reach your phone, which I've seen, uh, and, and or you're unconscious, which fortunately I've not seen. Um, but anyways, those are two really neat safety features uh, that uh, OnStar does provide. Okay, um, now I wanna show you how to hook up a phone to Android Auto. Currently, my iPhone is filming, and so I will not be able to show you that, but it works the same way. On your Android, you're just gonna go into settings, you're gonna go into connections. When you get into connections, then you wanna click on Bluetooth. Now, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom of my available devices, and then I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to phone, and I'm gonna say manage phones. Since there's no phones connected, I'm going to add a phone. Okay, and I'm going to be looking for Chevrolet 5963. That should show up in my Bluetooth settings. Now it showed up. So I actually had to click the scan button for it to pick it up, but it's there. It says on my phone it's pairing 169, 484, 1K. Okay. Yep, pair, pair. That was the same number on my phone as it was on the on the infotainment screen. Sometimes if you have two phones that are close to each other, uh, it'll actually pick up the other phone, so just make sure it's the same number. Okay, now, um, this, okay, it says uh, allow access to contacts. Yep, you wanna click allow. Uh, access to messages. Uh, I wanna be able to text a message there, so I got that. Okay, I'm gonna hit uh, upload names to Google. Okay, that's, the, I'm hit deny, you can do that either either way. Okay, now. Here, so when I clicked on those things, I have to enable Android Auto. So it first went to Bluetooth. Often it just pops up that question, but I actually had to click on those things. And then it says, to continue, select Android Auto on your car screen, which I did. I'm gonna click don't show again on my phone. And it should be coming up. I gotta hit continue here. It's taking just a minute. Here we go. We're gonna get a split screen. All right, now I can sh uh, shut my phone off, throw it in the wireless charger. And here I go. So in Android Auto, um, what's going to happen is you get a split screen here for navigation. Here I've got um, music. If I swipe over, these are suggestions for me. Okay. And then if I click on the dice, now I'm going to get all the apps for my phone that currently work with the vehicle. Uh, as I add more apps, it might have more. And I'm going to swipe up and down like this. Okay, to see the apps. If you're an Apple CarPlay, you're going to swipe left and right. Um, so, but you can see that basically it's gonna work with any navigation system. It's going to work with any app that does media. So sound, so music, uh, uh, audio books, um, that kind of stuff, um, podcasts, it's all here. Okay, so if I went to Google Maps, let's say I didn't sign up for the service after the trial period ended. What's wrong with that? All right, that's a great picture. Um, and of course, you, it, it'll function just like it does on your phone. So all your favorites and everything that you have saved by signing into Google on your phone 
are going to show up here as well. Um, so that is just really, really cool. Now I want to point out something. I'll go back here. You see the Andrew Auto app now came alive, so I can click on that, which is really nice. Okay, um, but that's how you set it up. And Apple CarPlay will be the exact same. You're just going to have to remember at the end, you're going to have to remember where, rewind the video if you need to, and look at where I clicked to enable Android Auto, and you're probably going to have to enable Apple CarPlay as well. Now, um, I'm going to go to home for a minute. I want to show you the drive modes. So it's got some pretty neat graphics. So if I, uh, right now I'm in normal, Baja, terrain, tow haul, yep, off-road, normal. Okay, so uh, that's in that, that's right in your center, uh, center console, uh, right in the middle, right next to the shifter. So that is it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the newly redesigned 2023 Chevrolet Colorado. And again, this is a ZR2 trim level. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.